Uh, hello, my name is Luis Alt, and this is the Service Design Show. I'm Mark Fontaine, and this is the Service Design Show. With the Service Design Show, we help you to stay one step ahead by talking to the people that are shaping the service design field. We talk about the current state of the industry, exciting new developments, and the challenges up ahead. My guest in this episode is Luis Alt. Luis is the founder of LiveWork in Brazil. He's a writer of a book called Design Thinking in Brazil, and he's also a teacher at several universities. We'll talk about several topics in this episode. Uh, one of them includes the future of services. We'll touch up on service culture in Brazil, and we'll also discuss the relationship between organizations and customers. If you want to fast forward to one of these topics, check out the episode guide in the description, or just stick around and watch the whole episode. Welcome to the show, Luis. Oh, thank you. Uh, good morning uh, for you, because it's morning in Brazil, right? Yeah, it's uh, 8 a.m. in the morning. So, okay, yeah. and, and I'm in a gray Utrecht, gray rainy Utrecht, but uh, there has to be some difference. L Luis, um, could you tell me, I'm really curious, what is your very first memory uh, of service design? All right, so it's, uh, it's not that long ago. Um, I, I was watching some of the uh, uh, previous episodes and uh, we've got some, some guys that are here uh, for quite a long time. Um, I remember it was in 2008, I was uh, doing a master in design management in Barcelona. Uh, and my objective over there was to understand how, to, uh, how the design culture uh, could be more instilled inside organizations. And midway the course, I had some, um, uh, a workshop uh, for, for with Cale Thompson from Engine, actually. <laughs> Hmm. And he's now at Ziba in Portland, and and it 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 was it got a, a a very strong impression on me because being a product designer and a, a, an industrial engineer, I thought it kind of uh, was the perfect way to merge both disciplines, you know. And uh, I started to get uh, very interested in the topic, hmm. so I went on to. Uh, to investigate a little bit uh, more about it and, and found out uh, that there would be uh, this conference, uh, the first one in Amsterdam actually, uh, about, the, the, about service design and I decided to go there and met a lot of people and I, my mind was set up that I, I should work on with, uh, in it and not with product design that was mm -hmm. what I was doing before and, and managing. Uh, yeah, that I conference managed. was really a tipping point, uh, I guess, for, for a lot of people in service design. A lot of people are still around that were there back in uh, 2008. Yes, uh, it, it was very good because there was a sense of community and you could see how the market was and what kind of projects were being made. And uh, um, I think that was uh, kind of inspiring. So I decided to to work uh, in the in this area, uh, but being 2008, a hard time in Europe, uh, I think that the best option at that time was to come back to Brazil and do something. So uh, fortunately, I, 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 I'm not sure if, if fortunately, but uh, there was no one doing this here in Brazil, so I couldn't ask for a job and I had to uh, come up with my own company, my own practice. Uh, so that's that's what I did, and later on we we became LiveWork. Hmm. Um, are you coming back to Amsterdam for the upcoming conference? Yeah, I I, I want to. Uh, I'm not sure if if I'm going to uh, if it's going to be possible because um, we are doing plenty of projects right now. We were discussing a little bit about it before starting recording, and uh, you know. Um, it's in a difficult time of the year, the conference. So it's every every year when I, I think about going, it's it's this tough decision to make. But but I'm 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 leaning towards going. Yes, for sure. All right. Maybe maybe we'll do a sequel to this episode then. Um, Luis, we are uh, quite a few episodes in, but I can imagine people haven't seen uh, a previous episode yet. So let's explain the format, how it works, uh, really quickly. I have uh, some topics printed on cards here, and you have uh, different cards uh, printed at your place, right? Yeah. 
So I'll pick one of the topics, you'll pick a question starter, and uh, we'll go on from there to answer that question. Good. All right. I'll start with the question that interests me the most, because there is a reason, of course, why I asked you, and uh, the reason is I've talked to a lot of people from uh, Europe, uh, from the US, also from uh, Australia already, but I haven't talked to anyone from Latin America or Brazil in this case. So I'm really curious if you can make a question that starts, that goes uh, into this topic, service culture in Brazil. All right. So. Okay. What is the question? Um, how can we uh, make the service culture better in Brazil? So maybe that's, that's something that's been in my mind for quite a long time. Uh, and I've been studying a lot. Uh, you know, being here in Brazil with a, a language barrier, uh, I always uh, wonder if I should be more... Um, we, we, we use our time, we have to choose how we use our time, right? So uh, I wonder a lot if I should be uh, talking more about Brazil to, uh, internationally or, uh, in, and write and speak in English, or if I should concentrate in my market and you know, really develop a culture of design, service design, design thinking and services here in Brazil because uh, many of Brazilians, they don't speak uh, English. So if I write in English, uh, I'm making a decision to, to talk to people from the outside. Yeah, and yeah. and, and I, I think it's more noble, let's say, uh, to concentrate on getting things better here in our market and being live work at global brand, the international work is already being done, right? So, um, uh, and that's why could, I've been... Yeah, sorry. Could you... Could you, could you uh, for uh, to start off, what do you mean with so service culture? What is your idea about service culture? So yeah, uh, I, I travel a lot, and uh, when we go to Europe, for instance, uh, the way people uh, treat each other uh, while in a service, let's say a restaurant or a museum, or when you want to uh, make a, 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 a telecommunications plan with a contract, right? Uh, the, the service tends to be in a certain way, and in the US it's very different, and if you go to uh, Asia it's completely different, you know, and, and Brazil has its own culture. So uh, I, I chose this topic because uh, I've been really uh, digging this, uh, uh, digging the, this, part, this aspect of, uh, okay, how are we fit to serve here in Brazil? What are our qualities and what are the things that we should uh, try to improve? What so, have you found so far? Because this is really interesting. Yeah, um, I, I have found that we have uh, some uh, bad qualities uh, and good qualities. And I would like to share four of each, maybe. Uh, uh, we have, uh, and, and this is of, of course a generalization, so it's hard to affirm that, okay, everybody is like this. No, that, that's not the case. Uh, but we see that very often here in Brazil. So, for instance, there is a project with this with work. You know, uh, people uh, think that they have to work. So it's it's not something. It's kind of an, an obligation. So it's not people like wake up in uh, Monday morning and and they are normally not happy. You know, uh, and that's something that gets in the way, in my opinion, especially if you are going to deal with people. Um, also, people are. A task driven I would say and not purpose driven so if you ask them to do something uh, and they 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 see themselves in a different situation that they could have helped but it's not what they've been asked for uh, you know uh, they simply don't do it and yeah, I'm saying yeah. uh, uh, I'm talking about the day-to-day -day services I'm not uh, talking about those very like luxury services or anything like this because we also have good services and uh, we have also this uh, MWP culture, like minimum work possible, you, you tend to do the less possible, the least possible, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of the sum of the previous ones, if you think about it, you know, uh, but it, that's something that, that happens a lot, people, uh, it's, they don't go the extra mile, you know, and, and that's not what you want to, to wh where you want to be in terms of uh, providing services. And, and, but I recognize these kind of aspects in... Um I guess in a lot of services, right? So is, is this, do you feel this is more strongly 
uh, in, uh, in Brazil or? Yeah, um, uh, that's a good question. Uh, so I'm trying to decode uh, the way we behave, uh, and l a lot of uh, anthropologists and the, the, and people that you know try to study this, those behaviors. They they do that by comparison. Uh, I'm not in that phase yet. I'm just making a, a study on okay how we are as Brazilians and uh, and what kind of uh, things that uh, kind of manifest themselves here. So uh, I'm, not, I'm still not comparing on how much different we are from the rest. Uh, but that's, th those are things that I, I don't like. Uh, there's also another one that, uh, th that's very, very particular here in Brazil, is that, that people don't perceive uh, rules as, some, as something that are uh, well made, let's say. So they tem tend to disrespect them. And that's something that you can see a lot, and we have lots of uh, corruption cases and things that uh, it's it's not ideally to talk about, you know. But it's something that unfortunately happens. So we have to to and and this is kind of, sometimes you know that there's no uh, social uh, punishment for those kind of things, you know. So uh, someone does small things like getting in front of you on a line at the supermarket, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and the guy says, hey, you know, I, I, I did it faster. I, and, and people tend to, to think that this is a good thing. It's changing, but it's still there in the culture, you know. So those things, uh, I'm not glad with those things, and I would like to make them better. But we have great things as well. So, the, yeah, that, that's, of course, also interesting. What do you think are the... Uh, um, uh, inherent things that the Brazilians have to actually become the best service providers in the world? Okay, so I think that we are great hosts. We can, we can um, entertain people a lot. We like to welcome people in our country, you know, uh, and we, we, we make a lot, a lot of effort to do so, you know, so uh, it's, it's in our nature. And, uh, well, the World Cup was a success in spite of our uh, scores, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in terms of how we received people and welcomed people, it was uh, spectacular. And we have the Olympics coming up. Uh, and I think even though uh, the whole structure is not the best, uh, people tend to uh, make uh, things work because of uh, how great hosts uh, they can be. So the, the challenge is to actually create a structure or an environment or a context where these qualities can thrive. Exactly. And there are lots of uh, different ones. Like we are good at remixing and uh, we, 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 can, we know how to deal with uh, diversity uh, very well. Uh, and we tend to use the, this diversity uh, to make new things. And a great example is uh, Bossa Nova, you know, it's the mix of samba. That's our own rhythm with jazz music from the U.S. Uh, and this happens in a lot of contexts, different contexts. So um, I think we are in a good position to, to do great things in terms of services. Interesting. What, what would be the bossa nova of service design coming from Brazil? It, it yeah. will happen probably, right? Yeah, well, that's... Uh, I, I'm not sure what will happen with the services in the future, you know. that's. Uh, Another topic that I chose, I'm, I, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but uh, there, there are so many things changing right now in the, uh, the, the, the information and, uh, you know, that's uh, so spread and so available right now. And this uh, creates a lot of uh, different scenarios for, for, for services. So I'm not sure if uh, we are going to be more localized or more globalized in terms of how the experiences will spread around the, the world. So, you, as you've already hinted upon this, let's just go ahead and touch upon the, the second topic. And this is, like you hinted, the, the future of services. Is there a question started that goes along with this one? Yeah. Um. All right. So, <clears throat> who are, maybe, uh, who are the next great service providers? You know, who are the ones that will... Uh, will be the best ones in, in, in the service context. And, um, and that's, that's something that I've, I, I chose this topic and this is, a, this is a very challenging topic because I don't have uh, uh, 
great questions, uh, great answers. I maybe have gr uh, some good questions because um, everything, uh, this, the, the, the startups movement, you know, the, the uh, in, in, uh, artificial intelligence, there are lots of things happening right now that are changing uh, drastically the way we interact with companies, you know. So uh, I don't know. Uh, let's say if we are going to interact with lots of companies or if we are going to interact with uh, a specific uh, avatar or so, a system. So let me ask this question a bit differently. What are the developments that are that you find the most uh, exciting, the most interesting, the most inspiring? Well, um, I think that when we look back uh, a couple of decades uh, from now to this moment and uh, to this past 10 or 20 years, we'll see that a lot of things happen, you know, happened. Uh, the, the information that's uh, spread and available, that is making companies, uh, uh, that's forcing companies to be more transparent, you know, uh, this collaborative movement that uh, the transparency is kind of uh, enabling, you know, so we are kind of, we are seeing things uh, that uh, the as the world grew uh, and the population grew, we tend to uh, be more separated from each other and kind of uh, suspicious, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and now, because of this, uh, that there are so many, there's so many information, and uh, we we can kind of trust each other because of this transparency. So we see business like Airbnb that we welcome people that we never met into our homes. We share rides with uh, other people using. Uber pool or relay rides and th those kind of services. So um, everything is changing in that, that sense. That's making uh, kind of a, a go back to the ancient times when uh, people used to be closer. Even though the technology, yeah, some people yeah, say that yeah. uh, separates people, but in this sense, it's kind of making them uh, uh, have a better uh, relationships. You know. Uh, but and, and, and that that's something that's happening. But there are other things like in, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, those the voice recognition, and there are many other things like those um, screens that are everywhere. You know, if you you carry a computer uh, in your own pocket with you. So uh, there are so many things that are happening, and those this kind of potential for uh, for to change everything in the services and the way we know them. You know. Do you think the service design community is ready for this? Because uh, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about artificial intelligence and voice recognition, these topics that you just mentioned. It's, it's for me, from what I've seen, people are in service design are just really busy doing good design research and going, making good customer journeys and getting people to act upon them. What is, what is your uh, experience so far? I think that design research will remain and it will still be, be very important because we still have to come up with uh, solutions for, pe for the people, you know, we, we design to the people. Uh, but we have new ingredients uh, that we can use. So I think that's, uh, it's, it's all about building re repertoire, you know, it's about uh, seeing what's around and what you can use in your favor to come up with uh, the best possible experience and not only uh, the I, I think service designers, they, uh, we, uh, I, I won't say they, but we tend to focus a lot on, on creating great experiences for people, but many of those service designers that are working on customer journeys, they forget that it's all about uh, the organization as well, because if it's not good for the organization, then it won't exist at all. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so knowing everything and those technologies and what they are able, what we are able to do right now, it just makes things more interesting. Mm. No, I, I think we'll see, uh, I mean, really curious if we'll see different people entering the service design field, people that are coming more from a, maybe a technology background and um, uh, feeding these ingredients in. But yeah, I think everything is, is kind of uh, going to the same place, you know, as we are seeing a movement from uh, business consultancies and strategy consultancies, and they are starting to talk more about uh, everything that we do. Basically, uh, I, I, I think we'll see also uh, people from tech uh, coming to this uh, region as well, because uh, if we, this is the more, uh, 
how I don't know what the best word is. It's the most the more humane uh, way to to come up with uh, solutions that are good for everyone. You know, yeah, and yeah, yeah. the purpose is also something very important. Uh, in one of the previous episodes uh, with Erik Roskam Abbing, he was telling uh, that even his uh, accountant was embracing the design thinking and service design way of working. And, th and that's probably, hopefully, where it's heading. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, I think this kind of uh, collaboration, empathy, and uh, experimentation values, they should be taught at school, you know. Yeah, because yeah. something that everyone can uh, use for their own uh, uh, advantage, you know, to make things better, you know, yeah. it, it doesn't matter what they are doing. So um, let's move on uh, to the third topic uh, that I have here in front of me, and um, I just have the word relationships. Sure. Really uh, curious what you'll make out of this one. Okay, so um, what if? Uh, what if we thought of uh, relationships with companies uh, as with humans, you know, and that's something that's been uh, interesting me a lot as well because uh, we tend to separate uh, both, you know, it's, uh, we, we don't make those relations. And um, I was uh, writing a new book and I was uh, trying to come up with... Uh, it's hard to, to it's, it's not a formula, I hate formulas, you know, but it's, I was trying to come up with an understanding of, of how relationships work and to make, to try to mirror them uh, in terms of uh, how relationships between people work and how relationships with companies. So we know the, the, the classic journey, you know, from the discover awareness until uh, when the people, after abandonment, they return to the company. Uh, but I was uh, trying to make um, a zoom out on this, and I, I got to three different um, aspects. I would say that uh, from uh, attraction to retention. Right. And uh, the first one is cover. So cover like uh, the the physical aspect maybe, and not only if the person is be beautiful, but how how she's dressed and uh, the way she moves, you know, and uh, the people that is around her, that's very important. Let's say we are single, uh, single again, and uh, we are in a party and uh, uh, we see someone and, and we, we tend to, um, um, to take a lot, a lot of conclusions just by looking at those, those, pers at those people, you know? And the same thing happens to, uh, in business. So I'm a tourist or let's say I move to, to, uh, to Amsterdam. And uh, when I get there, I need a, a mobile contract, you know, I need to talk to people. So I will look at the stores, I'll see how they look like. And from that, I'll make some conclusions. It's not that I'm going to choose based on that, but that's, uh, I, I will start to uh, understand or, or, or notice which companies are, uh, I don't know, has, have a better uh, service and are, are more expensive and etc. you know. So that's the first one. And then... Uh, sorry, do you want to say no, anything? No, no, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. Uh, and then uh, after the cover, there's content, you know? So uh, content is what the business or what the people stands for, you know? So what does this person think about politics and uh, culture? And does she like to see movies and uh, uh, go to uh, music concerts? So it's more about what's, uh, you know... The, the values? Yeah, the values and, and what uh, she stands for. And maybe that's the business model in the case of a business, you know. So how much does this uh, business charges and what uh, does this business offers, you know, uh, offer. Uh, so that's the content. But and, and, and people tend to consider only those uh, two things, cover and content. But there is also one important and maybe the most important thing uh, that is the coexistence, you know, the, the, the after we move together, you know, what happens after we move together? When we start dating, everything is, is fabulous, you know, everything works perfectly. But after we uh, wake up uh, uh, on the side of each other, you know, uh, things start to get real, you know, and that's what we should take more care of, you know, in my opinion. So that's coexistence. Mm. Yeah, and I guess that's that's the part uh, that there were, where there is a lot of criticism uh, about service design, uh, service providers, 
that they spend a lot of time and money attracting new customers and then once you <laughs> become the customer nobody cares about you yeah yeah so and that i think that's a great argument for us to uh, to use in terms of uh, being service designers we can help a lot with that uh, and you know the case for uh, making clients stay versus gaining new clients that's that's already uh, it's, it's common sense, you know, people already know this, so we can show them the way and how we can do that, you know, how we can make the coexistence better. And there's a lot of challenges in this sense because uh, uh, companies tend to look at uh, current clients and what they ask for as uh, expenses, you know, as costs and not as investment, while we're investing in, in, uh, in advertising. Yeah, and we should rethink this, you know, we should uh, try to uh, improve the, the relationships while do, they are... Do you have some examples that are really inspiring to you that related to this topic? Uh, well, I have uh, more bad examples than good ones, <laughs> I would say, because, you know, it's very easy to, to spot uh, our horrible experiences, you know, and, uh, well, sometimes when we... we decide to sleep a little later on a Saturday morning and the company calls us to offer something that we already have from another company and they try to convince us that there, there's a it's better you know uh, so so that's that's an investment on attraction and not on retention and the classic one is when you say that you want to leave and then they offer you a better deal you know and that happens a lot in, in many sectors. So why is that? You know why? It also if happens in, in, re in human relationships, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you well, say you want to leave, you get a better deal. <laughs> it also happens, you know, when in human relations, the, uh, if the guy wants you to stay, you know, uh, then it would be like, okay, uh, I, I can make it better. But why do we only stop to and, and try to be better when people threaten to leave, you know? Uh, and why do we offer the best deals to people that... Uh, are kind of in, in not in the best uh, situation. Why can't we uh, think of ways to, to be better to people that are nice to us as well? So companies should try to, to think of ways to do that. And I don't have the questions. Uh, I think it's a, it's a case based. You know, it's a, for every sector and for every company. There's there must be a way to do so. Right. We're moving on, uh, Luis. This is really a super interesting uh, topic uh, that I hope we uh, we uh, learn more about. So uh, I've said in the introduction that you're also a teacher and you probably get this question a lot. And uh, when people approach you and say, Luis, listen, I want to get into service design. What is your most important tip for them? Well, um, it, it depends who's asking, I would say, because uh, if it's someone from um, business. Uh, I, th I think there are three important elements uh, when we uh, come up with a, a service. There is how to do it, uh, and there that's uh, more about the design thing and the collaboration and, and empathy and how to connect mm -hmm. to people and understand their needs and etc. Uh, so if people get have this already in their backpack, I won't say them to do that, but uh, that's something that is very important. And there's also the repertoire that I mentioned, so to understand what's around and and how companies uh, are structured and how to uh, propose things. So the repertoire comes in, in in two main aspects, in my opinion. So that there's the technology part of it and how uh, channels and touch points they can work uh, together, and in terms of business as well. So what kind of results are, am I aiming for, and you know how what is possible for a business to do and what isn't, and what is a good result for a, for a business. So I I, I think there is um, there is a gap that people have to fulfill before, uh, you know, being uh, able to, to do great projects in that terms, and then they can specialize themselves in any so, of those. So if topics. you had to summarize that gap, what is that gap? No, it depends. So some designers, they can have a gap in business or in technology. Some people from, uh, you know, uh, computer science can have yeah, this yeah, gap yeah. in design. And I, I would say that's very important, and also to start doing, you know, because I see a lot of people that are taking a course and then reading a book and then uh, researching papers and then taking another course and they don't ever feel that, that they are ready. Uh, but, you know, you have to start. You have to start doing and do a project for your uncle, you know, or for your grandfather and, 
and something like this, and 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 then you get uh, how things work. Uh, because first, when I interview people, the, one of the first things that I uh, ask them is, uh, what's their story in terms of projects? What they, have they done? You know, I want to know what they're capable of. Yeah. What they're yeah. So, like Lauren Curry said in one of the uh, previous episodes, start by start by redesigning a service that makes you angry. Yeah, that's that's a good, a good <laughs> option. Yeah. Uh, Luis, this is your opportunity to ask a question to the people who are listening or watching this episode. All right. Um, um, I, 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 I think that uh, one of, uh, since we are probably being watched by a community of service designers, uh, my question would be if they are aware of the impact that they are having on the world, you know, around us, uh, with every little decision that w we make, uh, because uh, it tends, it's a, it's very easy to think that uh, we are no, what, what we're doing is, is very little and it's it's just something minor, even if it's for a, a big company, you know. Uh, but it shouldn't be like that. We are all influencing people on how to work, on how to establish relationships, and uh, and and the outcome of our work is is very noble. You know, we get. We really get to design a better world, you know. Uh, a few people uh, get to say that, you know. And as service designers, we, we get to say that. So I think that uh, people should be more aware of the impact that they are having, even if they are doing a very small project for their uncle, you know. All right. Well, we'll leave it at that question. Are you aware of the impact that you are actually making uh, in the world? Um, Luis, time has flown by, as always, in these episodes, so that leaves me with one more thing, and that is to thank you for your time. Uh, it's nice to have a look in, uh, in uh, the Brazil culture, service culture. Uh, so, thanks. Thank you very much for the invitation. It was a, it was a pleasure, and it, it really flew by the time, yes. So, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. So, what are your thoughts about the topics I've just discussed with Luis? Do you see any similarities between the relationships we have with organizations and with people? Let us know down below in the comments. With the Service Design Show, we help you to stay one step ahead by talking to the people that are actually shaping the service design field. If you enjoyed this episode and like to see more interviews with service design pioneers, subscribe to the channel and check out some of the past episodes. For now, thanks for watching and see you next time.